Hello, I am Professor Shubhi Sharkar of Department of Geological Sciences, Jadupur University, Kolkata. Today, I will discuss on sedimentary environments in general. You will learn particular sedimentary environments in other lectures, but I will discuss about the general view uh, of sedimentary environments. So, a sedimentary environment is an area on earth surface where sediment get deposited and can be separated physically, chemically and biologically from adjacent terrains. A sedimentary environment may be a site of erosion, non-deposition or deposition. Accordingly, environments can be dominantly erosional or depositional in nature. Subaerial environments are likely to be erosional while subaqueous environments are mostly depositional. Erosional environments are not likely to be preserved in stratigraphic record and hence their existence can only be inferred from the detrital materials. Non-depositional or equilibrial environment occur on land and sea where transportation appear to be the dominant mechanism. Equilibrial environment do not deposit any detritus, they are preserved in stratigraphic record as unconformities. The third type of sedimentary environment is depositional which usually get preserved in stratigraphic record. The best way to identify an ancient sedimentary environment is to relate them with their modern counterparts. Sedimentary processes operate on modern environments and give rise to sedimentary products. Ancient environments contain the products in form of rocks. Considering more or less similar process operate within similar environments throughout the geologic time. It is easy to characterize each sedimentary environment on the basis of their environment uh, characteristics product. Uh, ancient sedimentary uh, environments hence can be extrapolated from the rock record by comparing the products with their modern counterparts. But such reconstruction is difficult and often has several inconsistencies. The process uh, become uh, for identification association of different uh, depositional environment can often vary. Major types of criteria used in recognizing sedimentary environment include the physical environment, uh, chemical environment and biological characteristics of the preserved rock mass. This feature that may, uh, that may be determined uh, from a single outcrop or from several basin wide spanning outcrops or even subsurface cores. The physical characteristics that are of principal value include bedding characteristics, the nature of formation contacts, sedimentary uh, structure and directional properties. Chemical analysis concentrate on the gross composition of the rock, the major mineral constituent and orthogenic mineral can be specially useful in environmental reconstruction. Organic materials play a major role in the overall analysis. The floral and faunal assemblages together with relative abundance and ratios of the various forms are very useful. The lateral and vertical faces relationship and the three dimensional framework um, can be 
greatly strengthen the environmental interpretation. Ancient sedimentary environments can be characterized by deposits of a genetically related succession of laterally and vertically adjacent sedimentary rocks which accumulated under a specific set of environmental conditions. Sedimentary rocks record of the geological development of this environment through space and time. Primary sedimentary structure predict the mechanism of their uh, formation, hence these structures can easily be related with the process of operating within particular environment. Sedimentary rocks classified into depositional phases chiefly based upon these primary structures actually represent the product of various processes operating on a particular depositional environment. After recognition of this structure, their association and distribution along time and space can give ample indication to identify depositional environment. This systematic approach is known as phasis analysis. Now, I should uh, discuss about phases analysis which is very important to determine a specific environment. Um, so, phases and uh, the term phases is introduced by Gracely in 1838 from the uh, Latin uh, for aspect or appearance. Reading 1986 defined phases as a body of rock with specified characteristics, but the commonest definition of phases runs as a body of rock characterized by a particular combination of lithology, physical and biological structure that present an aspect of different from the bodies of rock above, below and laterally adjacent. This definition was put forward by Walker in 1993. No two sedimentary faces are ever identical. However, the term faces can be used in many uh, sense. It is used as a strict observational sense of a rock product as per example, sandstone faces. It can be used as genetic sense for the products of a process by which a rock is thought to have formed example for example, tabidite faces or in an environmental sense for the environment in which a rock is thought to have formed for example, the fluvial faces. Besides, uh, tectoni, tectonophysis also uh, uh, has been considered when tectonics has been considered for phases analysis, those uh, are sometimes called post orogenic phases as for example. All these uses are acceptable as long as one remembers which concept is being used. Most information among these four varieties are the genetic phases as it provides glimpses of formative mechanism. The classical sedimentary phases or genetic phases is properly defined on the basis of sedimentary structure present within the rock unit along with their lithology texture, body geometry, etcetera. Description of a phasis must highlight the uniqueness of the phases in association. Subphases incorporate the minor variations within the phases for environmental uh, though a single phasis is inadequate, in, inadequate association of a group 
of phases and their distribution in time and space is required to understand the depositional environment properly. For phases analysis, one has to consider uh, not only the individual phases, but the phases association and phases succession. Now, uh, I will discuss uh, uh, the phases association and phases succession. For a meaningful depositional environment or paleogeographic extrapolation, phases are interpreted in their association. Phases can commonly be grouped into phases association, which can be defined as groups of phases genetically related to one another and with some environmental significance. Phases association are product of a particular sedimentation dynamics. Sedimentation dynamics as a whole is different between different sedimentary environments, but individual component are often shared. Only thorough familiarity with phases interrelationship can uh, uh, one uh, phases interrelationship one can classify different phases association. Association are the basic architectural elements or distinctive paleogeograph paleogeomorphic components in an environmental product. Phases or rather phases uh, association occur in distinctive succession characteristically known as phases succession in which one or more defining uh, parameter changes progressively up section like coarsening upward and thickening upward succession. Succession imply that certain phases properties change progressively in a specific lateral or vertical direction. The property in turn throws some light about the lateral as well as temporal changes in depositional environment like a coarsening upward succession indicate an increase in flow power as flow energy primarily control the grain size. Sedimentary succession are often made up of repeating cycles where each cycle represents a particular phasis association. Any one cycle is unlikely to contain all the phases and uh, also in the correct sequence and idealized phases association can be distilled from analysis of many genetically related cycles. Apart from environmental interpretation, phases association is always helpful for paleogeographic interpretation that is geomorphic uh, distribution of phases in space. Logical assumption about the train uh, of deviation from the ideal association enable one to predict the uh, paleogeography of an area. Body fossil and trace fossil also provide important clues. Trace fossils are more important in this regard as they never suffer any post mortem transport and generally get accentuated instead of being damaged like body fossil during diagenesis. According to the law of correlation of phases developed by Walther, phases or phases association contacts are very much important for establishing the relationship between depositional system in space and the resulting stratigraphic succession. While gradational transition from one phases to another indicate original adjacent environment and genetic relationship during formation sharp and erosional contacts provide no evidence of contemporaneous genetic relationship 
of depositional environments rather indicate juxtaposition of unrelated faces. The systematic classification scheme to evaluate the nature of sedimentary rocks in terms of sedimentary uh, sedimentation process and to interpret the depositional setting uh, therefrom is known as faces analysis. This process involves classification of rock assemblage in a way that unravels changes in paleogeography and or depositional framework through space and time. Faces analysis is the fundamental prerequisite for basin analysis, extrapolation of ex external as well as internal causes for producing faces changes whether it is gradual or abrupt. Successful implementation of sequence stratigraphy particularly in outcrop, extracting an idealized phasis model to characterize each depositional environment by combining the features of recent sediment as well as sedimentary rocks. So, now we will discuss about the phasis model. A phasis model is a general summary of sedimentary environment, ideally presented in terms of their idealized phasis distribution in time and space that make it applicable to different geological study areas. Phasis models represent a distillation of the key facts which together characterize a specific depositional system as sedimentary system are dynamic and vary through times. A good phasis model embodies a large amount of information from numerous example of the same depositional system by studying both ancient and modern examples to identify concurrent themes. Phasis model are thus prepared for the following three purposes. To sum up general characteristic products of different sedimentary environment inferred from the study area, to distill out universally applicable models for different sedimentary environments, to utilize the universal models as predictive tool in the study in a new area. So, now uh, uh, we should uh, learn something about the classification of sedimentary environment, how many environments they are, there are in, uh, in nature. As discussed earlier characterization of sedimentary environments require comparison with their modern counterparts to gain insight about the process operating on each environment. Sedimentary environments can be classified into three broad groups, continental environment, transitional environment and marine environment. Each group can further be subdivided into several depositional environment. Important continental environments include fluvial environment, alluvial fan environment, aeolian environment and lacustrine environment. Glacial environment is another important sedimentary environment, but mostly erosional in nature. Transitional environment include deltaic environment, estuarine environment, beach environment, barrier island and lagunal environment. The tidal flat environment also comes under this uh, scheme. Whereas, marine environment are grouped into reef environment, continental shelf environment, continental slope environment and uh, continental rise environment. All more, uh, it also include all the shallow marine environment and uh, also deep marine environments. So, uh, student please uh, look onto the table. I will now discuss on the uh, in a nutshell the 
different uh, environment usually uh, uh, we get in natural environment. So, you see the table here uh, I will discuss here only on continental sedimentary environment. Uh, as I mentioned uh, during my lecture that the continental uh, common continental sedimentary environments are alluvial fan, fluvial, uh, uh, fluvial lacustrine and desert or the Eolian environment. Now, considering uh, this the rock type present there, composition, color, grain size, grain shape, sorting, the sedimentary structure both inorganic and uh, biogenic and uh, of course, fossil uh, if it is a phenozoic sediment you can expect some fossil. So, all these you have to consider for uh, uh, interpreting an environment. So, uh, suppose uh, while you are considering an alluvial fan. So, it is likely that the alluvial uh, fan environment will be dominated by breccia, conglomerate and arcosic rock. And the composition uh, of the uh, alluvial fan sediments is likely to be terrigenous. They are of course, uh, depositing on the continent. So, they should be terrigenous. The color is expected brown or red because it is uh, uh, because it, it is within uh, the oxidation zone. Grain size in case of alluvial fan can vary from clay to gravel, but the grain shape should be angular. Sorting is most likely uh, it will be poor sorting and cross bedding, graded bedding these are the common inorganic sedimentary structure is expected uh, to present in alluvial uh, fan environment. Now, the fluvial environment on the other hand you see the rock type in uh, fluvial environment is likely to be conglomerate, sandstone, sealstone and shell. In, in a fluvial environment it is expected the conglomerate and sandstone is likely to be uh, deposited in the channel fluvial channel and sealstone shell um, is expected to be deposited on the uh, river bank deposit. So, the composition uh, as, as well like alluvial fan is expected to be terrigenous, color is also same. But uh, if you see the grain shape they, are, they vary rounded to angular. Sorting also not always poor sometimes the sorting is uh, good. Ripples um, is expected particularly in the flat plain deposit, graded bedding, sometimes tool marks, cross bedding, cross bedding are very common different varieties of cross bedding perhaps you have already read in your primary structure uh, that varieties of uh, cross bedding are uh, expected to be present within the fluvial deposit. Some biogenic structure you can expect fossil if present they are uh, they should be freshwater shells, bones and plant fragments of course, readily available in a fluvial deposit. Lacustrine de deposit on the other hand generally dominated by sealstone, shell, limestone and evaporite uh, deposit. Uh, they are uh, mo uh, mo mostly black in color, but brown sediment also uh, uh, brown color sediment is expected. The grain size varies from clay to seal or sand. Sorting uh, in lake uh, environment it is variable, tracks, trail, burrows are present, stomatolite also has been reported from lacustrine environment, freshwater shells, fish, bones, plant fragments are abundantly present in a lacustrine environment. The desertic 
environment or the aeolian uh, environment in most cases quartz arenite is expected. It is a sandstone you know and uh, uh, besides gypsum at times reported from uh, desertic environment they are terrigenous, but the uh, um, aeolian sandstone many times shows red in color grain size generally it varies sand to fine sand. The shape of uh, desertic sand is unique they are generally rounded sorting is also good they are rounded because attrition process is very much active in desertic uh, sediment. So, uh, uh, grain shape ra uh, rounded grain is expected cross bedding uh, uh, various types of cross bedding uh, is uh, expected in a desertic environment C cross bedding with reverse grading is a very uh, diagnostic feature of eolian environment track trail sometimes present, but fossil is thought that much expected in a uh, desertic environment. These are the transitional sedimentary environment varies from de delta, barrier beach, lagoon, tidal flat. In case of delta sandstone, sealstone, shale, coal, uh, rocks th th these sediments are expected. Composition uh, uh, of course, they are terrigenous. Grain size varies from clay to sand, sorting is uh, poor, cross bedding, graded bedding are very common, trails and burrows are expected in deltaic environment, plant fragments are uh, and shells are also abundantly present in uh, deltaic environment. Barrier beach, in case of barrier beach, quartz arenite, coquina, is expected terrigenous or carbonate in composition in very terrigenous sediment generally dominates, but carbonate is also reported. The grain size in a barrier beach is expected to be sand, they are rounded to angular, sorting is good, cross bedding is abundantly present, uh, symmetric ripples is expected if wave uh, is present, uh, tracks, trails and burrows are also uh, very common in uh, barrier beach environment, marine shells are expected as fossil. In lagunan environment uh, the grain size and the, and the um, uh, sediment type or the rock type are uh, generally sealstone, shale, limestone, ulitic limestone, gypsum, these are the common rock types present in lagunal environment. These sediments are generally terrigenous, although carbonate and evaporites are also very common. The grain size varies from clay, clay to silt, sorting is not good, lamination, ripple, cross bedding are very common in lagunal environment as uh, generally in the lagunal environment energy regime is low these ripples uh, cross bedding is, is uh, a common thing. Trails and burrows are expected marine shells are present in uh, particularly in, in lagunal environment. Tidal flat this is generally sandstone, sealstone, shale, calcilutite, dolostone, gypsum these sediments are present terrigenous mostly there, but carbonate and evaporite are also common. The sorting in a, in a tidal flat environment is variable, sometimes the sorting is very poor, sometimes it is good. Lamination generally present, but ripples are abundantly present in tidal flat environment particularly in the intertidal uh, flat environment. Stomatolite, trail marks, uh, burrows are very common uh, organic structure uh, present in tidal flat environment and marine shells are very common this uh, environment.
these are the marine environment consist of reef, continental shelf, continental slope and rise and abyssal plain. Reef are generally associated with fossiliferous limestone and composition of a reef mostly carbonate. The grain size is variable framework elements also varies. Sorting of course, uh, it is not uh, expected good sorting, but the fossils are abundantly present in a reef. So, corals, marine shells are common in a reef environment. In continental shelf, sandstone, shale, sealstone, fossiliferous limestone, ulitic limestone are common. Both terrigenous and carbonate sediments are dominant in this continental shelf environment. Sorting varies from poor to good, laminations are present and cross bedding are also very abundantly present in this environment. Trail burrows are common, marine shells uh, are frequently present in this continental shelf environment. Continental slope and rise, this environment consists of generally litharenite, sealstone, and shell. These are uh, terrigenous, uh, either terrigenous or carbonate. The uh, sorting is poor, graded bedding, cross bedding. Uh, lamination, even flute marks or tool marks are common in this environment. Trails and burrows are present. Marine shells also common, but rarely plant fragments are there. Abyssal plain is dominated by chert, shale, micrite, chalk, terrigenous. The composition is either terrigenous or carbonate. The uh, grain size varies, still clay is dominant, sorting is good, lamination may preserve or uh, trails and burrows are also common and if fossil is present, they are mostly marine shells. But while you are considering uh, this environment, you should not consider just only one feature, you should uh, consider many features because only considering one or two feature interpreting an environment is always dangerous. So, do not do this uh, for interpreting a environment, you should consider uh, the whole range of thing starting from grain size, grain shape, sorting. Uh, both inorganic and organic sedimentary structure, fossil present within the rock. A, for a holistic uh, interpretation of the sedimentary environment, one has to consider all these. So, students, now you can understand that determining sedimentary environment is not an easy task. But at the same time, this is the most important task of a sedimentologist to determine the particular environment. So, determining a particular environment, one has to do systematic phases analysis, phases association study and compare it with the existing phases model and then you should interpret the environment of the sediment deposited in a particular basin. Another thing you should consider not only the uh, physical feature present in the rock, you should consider physical, chemical and biological aspect of the rock, of the sedimentary rock and then interpret 
to, give, uh, to get a holistic view about the depositional environment. Thank you.